Okay, I have a classic mathematical card effect to share with you today that um, has at least one or two twists to it that people may not have seen before. So as you can see here, I have a good selection of cards. I believe there's 40 of them, different values, suits, and colors. Okay. Um, now, since we uh, both saw the cards, why don't we go ahead and just give the cards a little bit of a mix. In fact, if you were here, you could go ahead and just randomly cut the deck. That would be just fine. Okay, um, now we're going to mix the cards thoroughly with you dictating really how things are going to be done. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set out kind of random piles on the table of even sizes, like two, four, six, eight. But it's your choice as to how many cards we put out. So how many do you want for the first pile? Four? Okay, so four cards here. Two? Okay. What about next? You want six? Okay, that's fine. Okay, four again. Okay, that's fine. Four again. Six again. Okay, those are kind of big numbers there. Eight. <laughs> okay, two, four, six, eight. So I'll put it like this. And then maybe four again. And then I think we're left with two. Okay, very good. Now, sorry about going off the screen just a little bit. Now, what I need you to do is, first off, tell me which pile to pick up first, and also tell me if you want me to set it on my hand as is or flip it over first. So you want the top center, okay? You want as is or flipped? Flips, okay, very good. Top left, okay? As is, okay, very good. The very middle, right here. You want that flipped? That's fine. Uh, bottom right, you want that set down as is. That's fine. What about this one here? Flipped as well. Okay. And this one here, set down as is. Okay. That's fine. What about this one? Flip. Okay. Top right, down as is. What about this one? Flips. Okay. Well, let me just show you the state of the card so you'll have some sense as to, you know, kind of how mixed up they are here. In fact, we can even uh, mix further. We can do it in hand. Um, if you want to just call out uh, even numbers. So two, okay. So I'll flip the top two. And I'll just do a random cut. You want four now? Okay, I'll flip the top four. That's all I'm doing. You want two again? Okay, that's fine. Very good. Four, okay, we'll go like that. It's random cut. Two, okay, that's fine. Eight. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, wow, that's a big one. Uh, why don't we do just one more of those? Four. One, two, three, four, flip. Okay, well, I think the odd numbers are starting to feel a bit neglected. Uh, since all of those are even numbers that, that I asked for. So I'm going to have you state a number of odd numbers, and that's how many cards I'll deal out into various piles here. So what odd number do you want to begin with? Seven, okay, that's odd. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What next? Three. One, two, three, and next. Just one? Uh, one is odd. <laughs> Five. One, two, three, four, five. How about now? Five again. One, two, three, four, five. How about now? Seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. How about now? Three. One, two, three. I'm going to run out of room here. <laughs> seven. I don't know if I have that many, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Very good. Okay. And then technically, I guess we have two left. So to, to put them out as odd size piles, I guess they would look like that, right? So each, each pile now has an odd number of numbers. Now, some of them are kind of boring, <laughs> which is one, but um, that's kind of how you ask for things to be done. Okay, apologize for things going off a little bit. Okay, um, now I want you to choose any packet here, kind of starting place. So top on the right, but not the center. Okay, very so start right here. Okay, that's very good. So we'll go ahead and just stack those. Um, 
I guess I should have asked you, I could have, clockwise or counterclockwise. So apologize for that. But when you go to do this, you can give the spectator that choice, clockwise or counterclockwise. Okay. Well, do you want to do any more of the mixing that we've done? You want to do a little bit more of the in hand, random cut, and then flip some? Okay. So random cut. Uh, how many flipped? Four. Okay. Random cut. How many this time? Four again. Okay. And random cut. Maybe just one more. Two. Flip two. Okay. So what I'm going to do now, and we'll give you a kind of a final set of choices here. So let's see here. I'm going to deal out into uh, four piles. These cards are fairly new, so they're kind of going everywhere here. Okay, so we're going to, quote, fold the cards from left to right, right to left, inside out or outside in. It really will be your choice. Okay, so let me just straighten these up. Okay, so there's pile one, pile two, uh, pile three, and then pile four over here. Okay, so we can fold the packets onto each other from left to right, right to left, inside out, or outside in. What would you like? Outside in? Okay, so how this works is this little packet like flips over, lands there. This one also kind of flips over and lands there. And then we flip and stack these in whatever order you would like. You want the left one flipped and stacked. Okay, very good. So this has brought us kind of to the end here. And let's just take a look at what, we're, what we have here. Huh, I don't know. Do these cards staring at us have any meaning to you? <laughs> well, they do to me, and some of the, some of the rest of you will probably catch on here. Um, in fact, what I'm going to do, let me just, um, I'm going to see if I can fit it like this. <laughs> uh, because I'm going to bring up a different window, and I'm kind of hoping to have these in view with the window open okay so you can see the cards there so let me just uh change windows for a second okay looks like i fit it i kind of moved it a little too far this way but that's <laughs> that's okay um well do you still not see anything kind of interesting about the up facing cards well, this kind of depends on whether or not you're familiar with the very famous sequence called the Fibonacci sequence, or you maybe have heard of Fibonacci numbers. They're related to the golden ratio as well. So on the left-hand side of the screen, uh, here's the official Fibonacci sequence. Some like to start with zero. So zero, one, one, two, three, five, eight, 13, 21, and so forth. How this sequence is generated, each term in the sequence is the sum of the previous two. Okay, so for example, zero plus one is one, one plus one is two, one plus two is three, two plus three is five, and three plus five is eight, and then five plus eight is 13. Now at this point, we leave the size of card values. Okay, because the, uh, we often count the jack as a 11, a queen as a 12, and a king as a 13. So we're looking at numbers, and we don't have a zero <laughs> card. So really just looking at 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, and 13. Okay, so re-inspect re the up-facing cards and see if you notice anything now. Well, every single up-facing card here is a Fibonacci number. Okay, as you can check on the left-hand side of the screen, once again, King's 13. Now, this won't be terribly surprising if the other side is the same, right? It's like, okay, there's Fibonacci numbers everywhere. Okay, uh, do you see any Fibonacci numbers there? Hmm, six, no, 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 no. I don't see a single one. Somehow we have separated this famous sequence of numbers from the numbers that do not fit the pattern of the Fibonacci sequence. Whoa. Okay, so how did we do that? Well, this is a Hummer performance, if, um, if you haven't picked up on that already. 
Um, in fact, I'll, I'll add some links in the description below to the Hummer principle because I talk about it a lot on my channel. But let me just quickly tell you how the deck was, the 40 cards were set up. And then if you go through and do everything I did, um, this will work for you every time, actually. So I had, initially I had the Fibonacci card values alternating with non-Fibonacci card values. Okay, so that's kind of how we started. So this one's Fibonacci, non, Fibonacci, non, Fibonacci. So I had that all the way through the 40 cards. And then I did a Charlier shuffle, which is equivalent to just cutting the cards. So that won't hurt this cyclic arrangement that we have. And then the Hummer shuffle consists of taking any, I'm just putting the cards back, <laughs> taking any even number of cards from the top, flipping them over as a group and setting them back down on top. And then from there, you can cut anywhere. In fact, it's called kato. Cut anywhere, turn over two. That's what it stands for, okay? So that's called the Hummer Shuffle. And the Hummer Shuffle has some very surprising properties that we took advantage of here. So because the deck was alternating, so we had like Fibonacci card values in the odd positions, let's say, and non-Fibonacci in the even. What will happen is if we perform a Hummer shuffle, which is this random cut, flip two or any even number, repeat that as many times as you like, you can then separate the cards so that the original odd position cards are facing the opposite way to the original even position cards, which is really what happened, okay, in the end. Now, what's kind of new, at least I've never seen anyone do it, is the dealing out into odd size piles, okay, in, in kind of a circular arrangement, okay? So deal out one, then five, then three, then seven, and so forth, okay? And it is true that you can have any starting point and then you can stack those counterclockwise, if you like, or clockwise. It will not harm the outcome that we hope to achieve for this effect, okay? So I, I don't know how well known that is. I, I'm sure it's known by some, but um, it, it's a nice touch because technically the Hummer Shuffle involves just even number of cards being flipped in place and then set back down. Well, some people kind of wonder, okay, what, what about odd numbers? Why can't we use odd numbers? Well, we can. We can use them in, a, in the way that I did here, and it works just great. And then, of course, at the very end, uh, all we did was we did something called a folding procedure because the fact is, if you want to think about, like, this is card one, two, three, four. Well, these two cards, this is, like, Pile one, pile three, those are odd position cards. Pile two and pile four, this is where even position cards are, okay? So if you fold from left to right, right to left, inside out or outside in, it has the combined effect of flipping all of the even position cards one way and all of the odd position cards in the opposite way, okay? So they'll be facing opposite ways. Okay, so the Hummer principle is amazing. It's an amazing principle that's worth learning about. And once again, I'll have a link in the description. If you want to learn about this principle, starting with very simple examples and then kind of working up to something like we did here, that might be a good way to go. So anyway, thank you for watching. And I thought I would share this uh, with my LinkedIn group in particular, my Math Card Magic LinkedIn group. And, of course, anyone on YouTube who would like to watch it, that's great as well. So thank you for watching and look for other videos on the Absolute Math Magic channel.